Hello and welcome back. We're doing B flat majors today. Two flats at the key signature. The B flat, which we've seen before, and now an E flat. Okay, uh, let's have a quick run through all the finger patterns. So, we're going to prepare for the B flat, so open G string. Turn away, you find A. And B flat is a semitone between 1 and 2. Yeah, so B is a tone away, B flat. Yeah? Okay, so we need two tones and a semitone, three tones and a semitone. So after B flat, our first tone is C. Second tone is D. Now we need a semitone, remember, it means that you have a full spread while you prepare. Yeah, tone between every single finger. So low first finger is going to be your E flat. Now we need three tones. So first tone is F, G, A, and again we have to prepare a low first finger because A to B flat is the semitone that finishes the first octave. B flat. Again, we are going to do the same thing, so two tones, semitone, three tones, semitone. First tone is C, next tone D, our first semitone is between three and four now, E flat. First finger hops to the next string, it stays low, F natural, G. Our last tone to A and the semitone to B flat. Yeah, so the finger pattern when we build, we have a semitone between one and two, but then there's no tones between two, three, and four. A full spread on the D string, and the highest two strings we have three and four against each other. Yeah? Okay, that's what you have to remember. Now, we're lucky here, we have a full two octave scale. It goes from B flat all the way up to the second B flat. Yeah, so uh, it doesn't happen very often because he keeps going on until that fourth finger, no matter what note we start on. This time it works out perfectly. The last note happens to be also the tonica, so the B flat in this case. So it's a perfect two octave scale. Now, Interestingly, there's only one beat for each note. It means you have to think ahead faster and faster and faster. Yeah, in the first few scales we had four beats per note. Then we went to two beats a note. And now we arrived at only one beat a note. Now at 40, it gives you some time to prepare. It's still going to feel fast. Yeah. But once we get to 120, that's going to be really challenging. So. Memorize this. It's a fairly easy one. It's a major scale So it's not all that confusing the finger pattern. Yeah, so it's low first finger throughout and a Three and four against each other on the highest two strings full spread everywhere else so Let's get this go Okay, let's find that B flat so G A, And a low second for B flat Okay, think ahead because it's fast, yeah? Even at 40. One, two, three, four. At this speed, preparing 
your fingers when you come down the scale becomes problematic. You don't have time to slowly start building finger by finger. So remember the finger pattern. Float the finger pattern above the next string in the air and drop everything when you need it. Yeah, it is possible to build for now, but it's really fast, and the chance you're going to hit the string that you're actually still playing the that first finger. Um, it's quite big. The more you rush, the more likely you're, you're going to squeeze and the more problematic this becomes. So, train yourself bit by bit to prepare the finger pattern in the air. Above the string you're going to use. So when I'm going from the low F to the E flat, I float 3 and 4 against each other above that a string, so when I put it down, I'm going to be close. Now, if that doesn't work, that's okay, just try it again and again and again. And even though this is a tedious kind of practice, like going, like playing a note, concentrating where your finger floats, and then trying to place them all down at the same time, and get that note in tune. Yeah? That's hard work, I know, but once you can do it, you can do it forever. And your third and fourth fingers from now on, once you control that, are going to be much more likely to be in tune. So it's really worth the investment of time because it'll avoid a lot of struggles in the future. Otherwise you're always going to be uh, confused and trying to find that finger and you don't always have the time to be prepared. So, try to train yourself. Now, until now, we, well, in the first scales at least, I never mentioned the floating because I wanted you to learn to build things, get the experience of what it feels like. The next step forward is to do the same thing but in the air, above the string you're going to use. And then you drop it and you hope for the best. Is it as secure as actual building? No. But if you don't have time, you have no choice, so you still have to get as close as possible. And then, if worst comes to worst, you can always just roll that finger a little one way or another to make that note a bit more in tune. Yeah, but at least you're going to be very, very close, and that's what you want. In the beginning, very close is good. After a couple of months, very close is no longer good enough. But in the beginning, when you train something new, very close is a win, yeah? Anyway, we're going to speed this up, so make sure you have this under control, because at 120, this is going to be a real challenge about preparation, yeah? Always think ahead. Yes, you have to pay attention that the note you're playing is in tune and has a nice sound, but at the same time, you also have to, your fingers have to start preparing for what comes next. In case of being quick. Take care and good luck.